In today's episode, I guess I'm going down memory lane and we're going to go back to the DCC cabinet. basically take you through the build I'm going to do a bit of voiceover and give you a bit of detail with the background to this DCC build and uh, the steps that I went through and with that said let's cross over now here I have the DCC cabinet shell constructed the body is made with 18 millimeter triple A marina plywood with a 12 millimeter sheet of standard plywood for the backing the shell was just butted together glued and screwed no fancy carpentry here the DCC cabinet is made up of two drawers. The top drawer will house the DC power requirements for the multi-level layer. The bottom drawer will house the DCC power boosters and a range of circuit breakers, including the reverse loop electronic. Here we can see the top drawer fully extended. Over on the top right on the side of the DCC box, I've drilled a 28 mm hole for the AC mains power cords. Once this cabinet is in place, I will anchor it to the wall due to the weight of those drawers. This side view shows the two exhaust fans. All up there are four 120mm fans, two on each side. One side brings in fresh air while the other side pushes air out and gives the internal componentry good air cross flow to help keep things cool. In order to get a clean round cut for those fans, I took a spare 120mm fan in which I removed the centre piece and used the outer rim as a guide for my router. I screwed these in place and used the router bit at a bottom end guide as pictured. To keep dust as a minimum, I also included a mesh fan filter on both sides of each fan. This is the inside view of the fan configurations. Place the fan in a diagonal pattern on each end of the box to maximize air cross flow internally. This is the bottom drawer cutout. The three smaller cutouts are to house the R amp meters, one for each of the layout levels. The large hole is to house the visual display of the circuit breakers as well as the reverse loop electronics. This photo shows the fans wired up. It also shows a better view of the heavy duty drawer sliders being used. In this picture, you can see that the top drawer face has been attached to the drawer itself. This was constructed with L brackets internally, as shown in the picture. The drawer face was then glued and screwed. These external screws were then puttied over and sanded. If you look closely, you can see the putty still drying. The top drawer face, unlike the bottom one, as a continuous section cutout. This will house the individual voltage and amperage meters from the DC power supply, as well as the on-off switch for the entire cabinet. Here you can see that both drawer faces have been connected to their corresponding drawers, with the bottom one yet to have the screws puttied to be primed with paint. You may notice that each drawer has had their own edges contoured. This was done with a router. This was undertaken after the drawers were inserted and in part of the box. Here is a side-on view of the DCC cabinet in the raw. The cabinet feet were now attached. They are self adhesive felt rubber feet. Here you can see the drawer handles now fixed. They are just your standard array of kitchen handle fixtures. In this view you can start to see the external power connectors being installed. These will connect the internal power supplies to the right external power buses that will be powering the three levels and districts of the layout. Here you can see the first coat of primer on. Here we have another view with the first coat of primer. Here is the first coat of paint. The paint colour is called Viking Grey by Torbmans. Here is the DCC cabinet after the second coat of paint was applied. Here is the fit out of the bottom drawer. The black boxes are the MRC 8 amp power boosters, one for each of the levels in the layout. Each has been laid out to match the required circuit breakers and reverse loops for each of the level requirements I've gone with. The electronic DCC componentry is from the PSX series range. The first and third levels will have three districts each, including a reverse loop. The second level will have two districts. Here is the first draw DC power layout coming together. Basically it has the 30 amp DC power supply center, the 17 amp accessory DC power supply mid left, breakout boxes to distribute an array of power bottom left, and buck converters to limit voltage requirements to the accessory lines. For example, these will be used to power the switch machines on each of the layout levels. Here I'm doing some testing of the power outputs. You can see the buck converters being dialed into the correct voltage requirement. Here is a close up of the type of buck converters I'm using. I have also started to label the important internal components 
for later fault finding and navigation purpose needs. Here you can see the buck converters on and roughly set to 8 volts. As the DC power supplies had their own on off switch, I've had to open each of them up and bypass these switches. I then diverted to a single DCC cabinet main switch. You can see these with the green mains wire that I've got in place there. All of the external power connectors have been installed here, including the CAT6 connection plate. This will allow the wireless MRC DCC control unit connect and communicate with the boosters from the other side of the room. A CAT6 transmission wire will run hidden up the wall across a roof beam and back down to the DCC cabinet. Here you can see the R ramp meters being installed. Further external labeling to make sure the right connections are made around the layout. I've attached a picture of the labeler for reference. Further wiring has been progressed here. I've also added piezos for sound alerting requirements. Those are the white cylinders on the PSX boards. As I'll also be adding visual alerts, I've also sold a breakout connectors to those PSX boards as well. Those are the blue terminals. Here there is more progress on the external labeling. This side covers level two and three, as well as the accessory connectors for each of the layout levels. Here's a close up of the e-fuel DC power supply. It puts out up to 30 amps, and the voltage can be adjusted between 12 and 18 volts. I will be running my MRC DCC system on 16 volts after a lot of researching online. This power supply will only be powering the three levels of the tracks in the layout, so in theory I will not be pushing this bad boy past 24 amps due to the three 8 amp MRC power boosters. In this photo, this DC power supply delivers 17 amps at 13.8 volts which is not variable. This will be used as the accessory bus lines. This is where those buck converters come into play by being able to drop the voltage as required and as needed. Here is a close up of those power distribution boxes. Each of the power lines include added protection with inline 10 amp fuses, especially from those coming from the 30 amp DC power supply. This buck converter is for the internal cooling fans. This allows me to decrease the fan noise output by dropping the voltage to 10 volts instead of running at the standard 12 volts in which these fans are rated at. This is the smoky grey Perspex that was custom cut and made to order through a company in Melbourne and can be accessed via eBay. Please do not use the one from Brisbane as this was my first company I went through. That is, I ordered, paid and it never turned up and they never replied to any of my emails. I'll leave that there. To drill the holes, I made up a template out of 3mm MDF board and then use this as my drilling guide when clamped together over the Perspex. It was cheaper making a mistake on the MDF board than the Perspex. Just some hard earned advice I'm passing on. With the wires soldered to the LEDs, here is the progress of connecting these to the corresponding PSX board to allow for external visuals to show things like short circuits and from which districts and levels it's coming from. This was also an ideal time to tidy up the wiring as I went along. Here is a close-up of the front panel. I was quite pleased on how it turned out. Labelling to come, I also invested in Perspex polish to help with those scratches over its lifetime. Panels in place with the power applied to show the displays. The top drawer consists of the main power on-off switch and the two DC power displays showing power consumption. The bottom drawer shows the DCC consumption from each of the layout levels by the R ramp meters, as well as the LEDs displaying short circuit conditions. If a short circuit is detected, the LEDs will turn red and the internal piezo will sound. All the front labeling has now been completed, further testing conducted. Here is the finished product placed under level one of the layout benchwork.